and two. The Calgary Corporate Challenge is coming. Join the celebration at a special registration lunch party, April 28th at Olympic Plaza. In times of emergency, whether naturally occurring or man-made, are you and your family prepared to deal with the many problems which may result? Are your close neighbors ready? How about the larger community you live in? Uh, I really haven't given it much thought. No, we haven't done any planning, I guess, in hopes that it's never going to happen. Well, in our home, it, it's pretty easy. We have a, we uh, for sure in the basement have a, a, a fireplace, a log you know, fireplace, so we can heat everything that way, and we can cook on that stove and do those kind of things. As far as me making plans personally, I haven't really made any. Well, I have to confess I haven't made any. Some recent events across Canada, Quebec's ice storms, the Manitoba floods, and windstorms in BC's lower mainland show how dependent we've become on our basic infrastructure. I don't know what to do. I don't, I'm in my basement. I don't know what to do and I don't want to die. Electricity, food, heating and transportation fuels, and phone service, to name just a few. In a large-scale emergency, any or all of those services may be interrupted. We've had no power and live wires on the road um, three nights. We've had, this is the second fire that we have. As a result of these disasters and many others, studies have shown that people must be able to survive for a period of at least 48 hours. That's two full days while services are being restored. And as those emergency services respond, life-threatening instances become the priority. So, knowing all of this, are you and your family prepared to deal with a large-scale emergency? Well, I guess um, we always keep extra food in the house. We have lots of candles and matches and things like that and lots of comforters. Well, we would have enough food for at least a, a two-week period. Well, we just keep warm the best we can. <laughs> 24 hours, I'm sure we can get by 24 hours. Are You Prepared? A show about care, community action in response to emergencies. This program was developed by the emergency services in our city to give neighbors a plan to work with should a large-scale emergency ever occur. Care was developed to respond to situations where emergency services in our city may be taxed to an extent where it takes longer for personnel to respond to requests for service. This program is divided into two parts. First, we'll give you some suggestions on how you and your family can cope in your home during times of large-scale emergencies. The second part will focus on the CARE program and its suggestions of how you and your neighbors can best work together for 48 hours while emergency services are responding to any life-threatening priorities. Before we start, though, let's see how well-prepared you are right now. Grab a pen and some paper, and we'll see how you rate for emergency preparedness by taking the CARE quiz. We'll ask several questions that can be answered with a yes or a no. Keep track of your yes answers, and at the end of this program, you'll get an idea of how well prepared you are. I'll be out in our community with the first part of the CARE quiz right after this break. It's really hard to say. I'm sure we would have enough food for at least um, 10 days or so to be able to, to manage. We've got... Uh, can openers and I guess we could eat cold food. I think the people in Quebec had to, whether they were actually prepared for the length of duration, but I think you've got to be prepared for the, the worst and um, be prepared to be out anywhere from week, two weeks, uh, whatever it takes. Well, we have a fairly good store of, uh, of uh, goods in the uh, larder and uh, that's about it. I think most people have quite a bit in their cupboards and... <laughs> Not very long, two weeks maybe. <laughs> that's about it. Are You Prepared is brought to you by Glen Eagles. Follow the Bow River home to Cochrane and enjoy. Follow the Bow River Valley to a place called home where the sounds of the city are far behind and a peaceful, easy spirit takes control. Glen Eagles of Cochrane, a total residential lifestyle where your closest neighbor is a green space or one of the 18 holes of the length of Glen Eagles. 
From single-family homes to the maintenance-free lifestyle of the villas, Glen Eagles is a total family community that's city close, country quiet, and wow, what a view. Glen Eagles, just follow the Bow River home to Cochrane and enjoy. Hi, I'm Nihad Dabaji from Dabaji Fresh Market. All our French pastries are made from natural ingredients, and the flavor is unbelievable. So, come down to Dabaji Fresh Market at the Northland Shopping Center in Northwest Calgary and sample some of these delectable pastries. There's employee family prices, now till Wednesday only, at The Brick. You can buy all furniture, mattresses, and appliances at the same great discounts that employee families receive. There's even special sale discounts on all home electronics. Save on everything for your home. Nobody beats The Brick. Welcome to the first installment of the CARE Quiz. The following seven questions will help you gauge how well prepared you are for an emergency. Remember, keep track of the number of yes answers you give. Number one, do you have a radio that is battery operated? Number two, at any given time, do you have several days worth of non-perishable canned goods in your home? Number three, could you prepare a meal in your home without the use of any electrical appliances such as an electric can opener or microwave oven? Number four, do you keep a basic first aid kit in your home? Number five, do you know why you should never bring a barbecue into your house to prepare food or provide heat? Number six, are flashlights, candles, and matches stored in an easy-to-find place in your home? And number seven, do you know how to safely store fuels for barbecues and camping stoves? So how did you do on the first seven questions? Keep track of the number of yes answers you give from this and the next two CARE Quiz segments. Now let's see how Chris did on the quiz himself. Well, Linda, I answered yes to most of them. Now, before we get into the details of the CARE program, let's take a look at some of the things you can do in your own home to make sure you and your family are always prepared. Here's the CARE checklist, items your family should have on hand so you're ready in case anything happens. The checklist is divided into water and food and equipment. Drinking water. At least one liter per adult per day for drinking purposes. This can also be juice boxes or pops. Non-perishable food, canned items such as soup, stews, baked beans, pasta, vegetables and fruits, crackers and biscuits, honey, peanut butter, syrup, sugar, instant coffee or tea. Equipment, manual can and bottle openers, waterproof matches, and plastic garbage bags. Additional water for cooking or cleaning. Fuel for camp stoves or barbecues. These should be used outdoors only. Do not bring them into your home to use. Here are some of the other items you should have on hand in the event of an emergency. They include a flashlight, radio, and spare batteries for both. Candles and matches. Never leave candles unattended when they're burning. A basic first aid kit, identification documents, and toiletries. Playing cards or games. Required medications and a backpack or duffel bag to carry these items in the unlikely event you have to evacuate. In large-scale emergencies, such as a flood or a major storm, sometimes there's the need for an evacuation at the direction of emergency services. If you're ever required to do this, keep in mind the following. Listen to the radio and follow instructions from emergency officials. Leave as soon as directed. Wear and take clothing and shoes appropriate to the weather conditions. Lock up your home. Sign up at the emergency center you've been directed to so you can be contacted or reunited with family and loved ones. And have an out-of-province person everyone can contact to provide details of your location if your family becomes separated. Now, in times of emergency, you can also expect varied emotions from your family members. This is entirely normal and should be expected. Here are some suggestions to get you and your family back on track during and after the situation. Understand that feelings of frustration, anger, worry, and being scared are all very real. Talk calmly about what's happened with your family. 
Get your children to express their feelings by drawing or playing out action. If you and your family organize some of the items just mentioned, you should be well equipped to cope during that all-important 48-hour period. Remember, emergency officials will be available to respond to life-threatening situations. However, they may need additional time to respond depending on the circumstances. Linda will be back right after this break to lead us through the second part of the CARE Quiz. Stay tuned. Would you bring your barbecue inside to cook? Not on your life. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go in the garage and open the door. Again, for the same reasons. Um, you need good ventilation. You don't want to uh, bring gases into your home. No, no, that, that's deadly. I don't think so. Uh, rather, whatever I need to cook, I will cook outside. May have perhaps with the, in a garage or whatever, but most likely outside. Deep Space Nine is coming to an end. This was supposed to be just a temporary assignment. But Calgary 7 will have all new episodes every Monday till it does. We will be victorious. Then, May 31st. For seven years, they've stood together to face the unknown. Now, a bold Starfleet crew must make one last heroic stand. Prepare for Star Trek Deep Space Nine, a final chapter. Two-hour series finale, May 31st on Calgary 7. Follow the Bow River Valley to a place called home, where the sounds of the city are far behind, and a peaceful, easy spirit takes control. Glen Eagles of Cochrane, a total residential lifestyle, where your closest neighbor is a green space, or one of the 18 holes of the links of Glen Eagles. From single-family homes to the maintenance-free lifestyle of the villas, Glen Eagles is a total family community that's city close, country quiet, and wow, what a view. Glen Eagles, just follow the Bow River home to Cochrane and enjoy. Where are you from? God's country. Tonight at 7, walk with Tess, Monica, and Andrew through a wondrous land. This is the battleground. Guiding mortals on their discovery of truth. I admire an angel's initiative. Nice to have a friend that knows the real you. Untouched by an angel. Then... I'm Mike Wallace. I'm Morley Saber. I'm Ed Bradley. I'm Steve Croft. I'm Leslie Stahl. It's 60 Minutes, right after Touched by an Angel, tonight on Calgary 7. They steal your time with endless reruns, second-rate shows, and hopeless movies. It's time you fought back by turning to 7, Calgary 7. Only Calgary 7 gives you today's top new shows and the brightest stars. Serve less. See more. Calgary 7. Welcome back. Are you ready for the second part of the CARE quiz? All right, then, let's begin. Number eight. Do you know the names and phone numbers of your close neighbors? Number nine. If the furnace in your home stopped working in the middle of winter and the house began to get very cold, do you know how to drain water pipes to avoid freezing and breaking? Number ten. Do you know why you should never leave your car running in a garage that's attached to a home? Number 11. Have you made plans for food, water, and shelter for your pet in the event of an emergency? Number 12. Do you realize the importance of making only emergency phone calls in times of disaster? Number 13. Do you keep an emergency kit stored in your car that has candles and blankets? And number 14, have you checked your smoke and carbon monoxide detector in the last six months to ensure the battery is still charged? Make sure you keep track of those yes answers. We'll see how well prepared you are after the next CARE quiz. Now we're going to look at how easily you can set up the CARE program within your neighborhood. To cope in times of emergency, neighbors will need to rally together to pool resources, expertise, and knowledge to help one another. This is something which is quite familiar to all of us. We're in a province that's known for its volunteer spirit, and CARE is just that. Neighbors volunteering to help each other out in times of need. CARE is an easy program to organize, and it'll take just one hour of your spare time to meet with neighbors, Go over the program and then discuss plans of action that will best work within your neighborhood. Organize care in your neighborhood now. 
and then you'll be ready to enact it when requested to do so by emergency services. Always keep in mind the following. People who are prepared and know what to do in emergencies do not waste precious time trying to organize themselves when disaster strikes. Being able to work together with your family, friends, and neighbors is the key to the success of the CARE program. No doubt it will take some preparation and organization, just like it will with the group you'll see in a minute. But this little bit of hard work now will help save valuable time in a crisis situation. CARE proposes you and your neighbors organize in the following manner. There will be community blocks of approximately 20 to 25 homes. These blocks form the core of the CARE program. It's important to note that those communities which have block watch programs can work within those lines of communications and structure already in place to introduce the CARE program to their neighbors. Those neighborhoods without the block watch program will be assigned community blocks and volunteers in the area will encourage the CARE program's initiation. Volunteers willing to coordinate the CARE program will call on their neighbors to set up the initial one-hour meeting at a site that is central to the 20 to 25 homes within it. It could be anywhere, the park in the middle of your cul-de-sac, someone's driveway, the local community hall, even indoors at the kitchen table, whatever works for your area. Helping each other be prepared prior to any incident, and uh, whether that's making sure that they have the right resources, even a simple thing like a first aid kit, but uh, providing that education, and, and uh, again, really neighbors helping neighbors. The purpose of this initial meeting is to explain the care community block the four teams which are part of it, and to assist neighbors in choosing one of the teams they're best suited for. Essentially, it's that spirit of com community, promoting that spirit of community. And that's what I talked about with you one-on-one, -on -one and, and uh, I know that's really the reason why you're here, is, is to support one another. Being outdoors is always a great idea because you get a good feel for which homes are part of your community block, the local landmarks, and which neighbors live where. The four teams which make up a CARE community block are the communications team, the safety and security team, the first aid team, and the sheltering and special needs team. Members of the communications team are responsible for coordinating the efforts of the block residents' response to an emergency. Team members coordinate essential information about the status and well-being of others within the community block. Hi, Mrs. Fitzman. Hi. Hi. Yeah, we're just coming by and checking how you're making out, huh? How we're, things doing? We're coughing, we're coughing. It's cold, but, but we're coughing. Yeah. How's yeah. everybody else doing? Doing okay. Uh, we, we're thinking that it's going to be another couple of days anyway. The communications team is responsible for monitoring a portable battery-operated radio for listening to emergency broadcasts from emergency services. Members also relay the message to the rest of the people within their community oh. block. I'm just going around to all the neighbors. I was listening to the emergency broadcast. The communications team will relay any critical needs to our city's emergency services. Should telephone systems fail, a communications team member would relay critical needs to the neighborhood fire hall. The members of the safety and security team check on the well-being of the families located within the community block. Done on a regular basis, these people verify that everyone is coping with the emergency. Hey, Shelly. Hey, Cody. How are you? Good. Good. Good to hear. So, uh, everything going okay for yeah, you? Yeah, no. okay. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Nothing? You haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary? No. Last day or so? No. Probably tired of seeing us, though, aren't Not you? No, we're <laughs> glad you're around. <laughs> Team members will provide emotional and moral support, offer assistance, or summon additional help when required. Tom? When you're finished where you're at, could you come over to number 42? Mr. Jake, we just got some damage here we need to help him with. The frequency of the checks done by this team is based on the nature of the emergency, the environmental conditions, and the makeup of the community. A community with many seniors or young children may need more frequent checkups. As well, members of the safety and security team may be tradespeople with specialized training or people adept at various handyman tasks. They can provide assistance to community block members by advising how to perform household tasks to reduce damage 
or restore normal operations. This may include draining water lines. or relighting furnace and hot water tank pilot lights. The first aid team is responsible for coordinating first aid needs identified by the safety and security team members. So it looks like he took a nasty fall down the stairs of so could could he just slip and fall or did he get yeah. dizzy before he fell? No, he said he wasn't dizzy. He just slipped, slipped and fell. This team determines the need for requesting emergency medical no. services. Requests for emergency medical services are passed along to the communications team, who relays them to emergency services. It's important to note that members of this team do not need to be nurses or doctors. It's recommended, however, that they have an approved first aid course. Members from the sheltering and special needs team provide support and shelter to people with special needs, identified by the safety and security team. This includes assistance for the elderly, children, the disabled, or any other people in need during an emergency. When you're at the initial meeting, try to get two or three volunteers for each team. And once the teams in your community block are set up, it's a good idea to meet yearly over coffee or a summer barbecue to review plans and get additional neighbors involved. Let's review a care community block. Each one is made up of four teams. Communications, which coordinates members of the block, communicates with the other teams, and monitors communications from emergency services. Safety and security, which verifies everyone in the block is coping during the disaster and identifies needs to the communications team. First aid coordinates and responds to first aid needs within the community block. And sheltering and special needs, which provides support and shelter to those with special needs. As you can see, CARE does take some basic coordination and planning with your neighbors. However, if disaster were to strike in a community where a CARE community block is already organized, action can be undertaken quickly. Those who've already volunteered won't be wasting valuable time in organizing themselves. They'll be busy helping each other. And that's what CARE is all about. Stay tuned, Linda will have the third and final segment of the CARE quiz right after these messages. I have my St. John basic first aid. I have CPR. The last first aid I took was probably when I was little and in swimming and babysitting horse that kind of thing. But it's been years. Put into play your, your camping camping skills. Okay. You know, if it's cool like this, outside outside the great refrigerator, you have cocaine. Can make a fire in the fireplace. Just basically standard for stay with PPR. We're on the road with Dr. Scholl. Next stop, the zoo. I want to talk to you about pain. My feet are soft. My knees ache. Yeah. Well, we're back. Did you know that the knee pain can be caused by the way you walk? No. The way I walk? If your feet aren't hitting the ground evenly, that can pull everything out of alignment all the way up to your lower back. This is the Dr. Scholl Dining Step Insert. Very futuristic. It's U-shaped design. Cradles and supports your foot so it hits the ground evenly. It feels real good on these big old feet. Like your foot cuts in the shoes. I really think these would help my lower back pain. Would you like a Dining Step? No, no, don't eat it. No. Does tossing one of these into your tank kill germs? Well, here's one way to be sure. Lysol Continuous Action Automatic Toilet Cleaner. It not only cleans, it kills germs. No other automatic toilet cleaner kills more. You have our word on it. Use one of these daily shower cleaners and you're missing something. The confidence you get from the Lysol name. Introducing Lysol Daily Shower Cleaner. Beyond saving time, it's the clean you trust. Lysol Daily Shower Cleaner. Follow the Bow River Valley to a place called home where the sounds of the city are far behind and a peaceful, easy spirit takes control. Glen Eagles of Cochrane, a total residential lifestyle where your closest neighbor is a green space or one of the 18 holes of the length of Glen Eagles. From single-family homes to the maintenance-free lifestyle of the villas, Glen Eagles is a total family community that's city close, country quiet, and wow, what a view. Glen Eagles, just follow the Bow River home to Cochrane and enjoy. There's employee family prices on all home furnishings, all mattresses, and all appliances at The Brick. Plus, after you can take until 2001 to pay on everything in the store. Employee family prices and air miles reward miles. Hurry, it ends Wednesday. Nobody beats The Brick.
Right now, let's take the last segment of the CARE quiz to see how well prepared you and your family are in the event of an emergency. Remember, keep track of the number of yes answers you give. Number 15. Has your family made up an emergency kit in a central location, and do you know exactly where it is? Number 16. If the pilot light in either your furnace, hot water tank, or gas fireplace were to go out, would you know how to relight them? Number 17. Do you keep a fresh supply of batteries for your flashlights, radios, and smoke and carbon monoxide detectors? Number 18. Do you have a fire extinguisher in your home? Number 19. Do you know the location of the nearest fire hall to your home? Number 20. Do you have enough drinking water on hand to last your family for 48 hours? And our final care quiz question, number 21. If an emergency were to strike when you and your family are not together, do you have a plan to know where and when to reunite? Well, how did you do on the care quiz? Let's find out now. If you answered yes 16 to 21 times, you can provide the necessary leadership to your neighbors during an emergency through the CARE program. If you answered yes 11 to 15 times, you're quite ready to cope during that all-important 48-hour period. If you answered yes 6 to 10 times, you're off to a good start for preparing for an emergency. If you answered yes 5 times or less, we hope this program has given you an understanding of why you need a high level of emergency preparedness. We'll be right back with our wrap-up and a few important details about care. Yes, I have a food source. So we've got uh, spare lights, like lanterns and stuff that we've got in case of a, a white blackout or whatever. But other than that, we haven't got any extra reserves or anything like that. Stuff that fires, candles, and mostly just non-perishable food, just in case. Some sort of uh, water, if there's water available, we like have a storage piece of water. Oh, we'd probably be good for uh, a couple of weeks. We just have to be trusting and faithful and hope for the best, that's all. Are You Prepared has been brought to you by Glen Eagles. Follow the Bow River home to Cochrane and enjoy. You can win a home theater system. What you do with it is up to you. Come in and play the Monopoly game at McDonald's. Just buy any 32-ounce drink or large or super-sized prize. You can win thousands of great prizes, like a state-of-the-art home theater system. And you can have the control. The remote control. Did somebody say McDonald's? For me, it was a uh, mental investment. I need the time. I need the break away from the hectic day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, kids, uh, work. Uh, business and everything else. I just needed a, a time that I can go to the gym, focus on myself, you know, get a mental break, and uh, it, I think that that's really important for everybody, especially because everyone is so busy running around day to day. Join World Health Club now and receive a half-price membership. Call 310-B-FIT for your free guest visit. We, like you, hope that a large-scale disaster will never strike in our community, but the recent ice storms in Quebec, the floods in Manitoba, and the powerful winds in British Columbia have shown how dependent we've all become on our infrastructure. Disaster can strike any time, so it's advisable you and your neighbors be prepared to cope during that all-important first 48 hours. Take the initiative and get involved with the CARE program with your neighbors. At a minimum, you'll get to know them better. At best, you'll be well prepared to help out both your family and your friends and neighbors. Remember, care is dependent on you, the volunteer. It takes a small time commitment and will not be difficult to set up. Based on what I have in my home right now, I imagine I could probably cope for at least a week. Yeah, I think at least a month, three days. Well, assuming that everything else is still freshly and so on and so forth, I would say as a guesstimate only, probably in the neighborhood of a month. We conclude this program with images from the Manitoba flood, the Quebec ice storm, and the west coast wind storm. Events like these don't happen very often, but when they do, we should all be prepared.
legacy, and luxury. Calgary 7 presents the gala opening of Designer Showcase 99. Call now for information and tickets in support of the Kids Health Fund.